So one of the main things that my consulting clients often struggle with is Teams and SharePoint integration. So they end up losing things in SharePoint, losing things in Teams. And today we're just gonna have a quick look at some of the basics about why that happens. So let's get straight into it. So I've got some slides that I created many moons ago, which are still relevant and just might help understand the technical detail of when you set a team up, what else it sets up, which is why you then might end up losing stuff and how Teams and SharePoint work together. So when you set a team up, it sets up quite a lot of other things. Obviously, if you're used to using Teams, you will know it comes in Teams and Channels. If you don't know any of that, then go and check out our basic training first. It's was paid, it's now for free on YouTube, it's four hours long. So it's got everything in there that you will need to know about Microsoft Teams. So you've got Teams and Channels. When you set a team up though, it sets up a Microsoft 365 group now, Office 365 group as it was called at the time. And an Office 365 group creates a SharePoint site. And in a SharePoint site, depending on how you use SharePoint, some people think of it just as documents, some people think of it as their intranet, it's actually both. When you set up a SharePoint site, it sets up a document library for you when you set up the group. And if you've created a team, it then creates folders in that document library for every single channel that you create. So when you first set up a team, you've only got a general channel, there'll only be a general folder in SharePoint. Every, when you go to the files tab of general, you're actually peeking in to the document library of the SharePoint site that's set up when you set the team up and into that general folder. Just complete the slide before I go back to files. The SharePoint site also has pages. So by the fact that you set a team up, you have got a SharePoint site, a fully fledged SharePoint site with SharePoint pages in it. So you can create your own little intranet for your team, which is what I recommend, especially in large organizations, so that your anyone in the team could create essentially intranet posts or news posts which we won't go into in today's video. But if you're interested, comment below and I might make another video on that if you're interested in how to have a simpler architecture for your SharePoint pages. And then Microsoft renamed SharePoint lists as Microsoft lists, but basically lists live in SharePoint. If you've got a Microsoft list, it can live in your OneDrive as well as SharePoint, but broadly SharePoint lists have remained the same. So as well as having document library and pages, you also get lists in your SharePoint site, which is why it's easy to have lists in your team. And all of that is the same permissions. So whoever you invite to the team, you're actually just giving permission to the group and therefore they have permission to the, all the document library and have actually permission to all the pages and have permission to all the lists in that group by default, unless you remove their permission. It also sets up some other things. So you also get a planner set up for you, a shared OneNote notebook set up for you. And you do technically in the background get a shared inbox, but depending on when you set the team up, depends whether you see that or not, because as Teams is now quite old in technology terms, when it first came out, you could see that shared inbox and do stuff with it. And now it's hidden from the global address list by default. So you, you need to do, your IT admin needs to do some stuff to be able to see that shared inbox. But for most people you don't need it anyway, which is why Microsoft decided to hide it. So if we jump back to think about files and folders, which is where people end up losing stuff or getting confused, if you've got an existing SharePoint site that you've been using before you set the team up, that's a completely separate site and a completely separate document library. So if you, a lot of people get confused with like, well, I've saved this thing in SharePoint and I thought Teams was the same thing, but now the versions don't stay in sync. It's like, well, they won't because that SharePoint site is completely separate. Teams is completely separate and Teams sets up its own SharePoint site as we've just been through. And so that SharePoint site isn't the same as your existing one. Over the years, Microsoft made that easier. So if you haven't got an existing SharePoint site, you might be able to convert that into a team. But for most people, either you haven't done that. And so that's why you're getting uh, confused. And so that's why I recommend just going with Teams and at some point, move all of your files over into Teams because that's the one place that you're going to work. Now, don't turn it into migration projects, just move the things over that you need right now and think about the rest later. That could be you know, an IT project to sort of migrate that over. But if you're the normal people doing a normal job, just start putting all of your new stuff in the team and transfer your other stuff over at some point, assuming you haven't got anything 
a bit more technical in your existing SharePoint site with metadata and retention labels and all of that sort of good stuff. And if you have got that, then you will already, you will already know. But for most people, that isn't the case. They just set up two things and don't realize they're two things and sort of get lost. Just while I'm on things getting lost, if you overuse Teams chat, then you will end up losing stuff as well, because if you put a file in Teams chat, it actually goes into the OneDrive of the person that's put it into the chat. And so if they leave or you just, you need to go back and find that file, you need to find that specific chat to find that file, because it won't be in the Teams bit of sharing, depending on how you share it, which gets a bit more nuanced as well. But as a basic rule, if you need to do work, put it in a Teams channel and put the file in the Teams channel and that will go through into the SharePoint site and be all saved and everyone can see it. And if you need to do something private, then consider a private channel or you know jump out into Teams chat by all means. But then the thing would be, the file would be saved in your OneDrive anyway, probably, because you wouldn't have it in the team. If you've got something saved in the team and you go and put it in the chat, it's actually creating two different versions for you. Another way people get messed up is going directly into SharePoint if they're used to getting files from SharePoint and not going into Teams and then they might create another folder in the top level root of the SharePoint document library and therefore you won't be able to see that in Teams because it needs to be in a folder that's linked to a channel otherwise you can't see those files from Teams because you've got to go into a channel to go into the files tab if that makes sense so if you go to general and click files you're actually already in the general folder in the SharePoint site in this example, if you go into Live Beta, into the Files tab, you're, in, you're automatically into the Live Beta folder in SharePoint. If you go directly into SharePoint and create another, another folder, say Test 1, at the same level that we're looking at right now, that isn't inside a channel folder. So then if you go into Teams, there's no way to come back out one level to see all the top level folders because you're already into channel folders by the definition of going into the channel. So that's how people lose stuff as well, is creating other folders in the sort of root of the document library rather than going into a channel folder. If you go through to SharePoint and go into any one of these visible channels, folders, and then add a folder, that'll still work. You can see that in Teams. But usually I say just sync the folders and channels that you're used to working in and you then don't need to go into the SharePoint document library ready to do anything, either go to Teams or go to File Explorer with a synced version of those folders. So before we finish, just cover private channels. So when you set up a private channel, that means that in Teams, only people that you invite to that channel can see anything in the channel. So posts or files or any other tab, which is quite useful. Still at the time of recording, which has been the true for a long time, but Microsoft still haven't sorted it, is that you can't have a planner and you can't have a shared OneNote, and I'm pretty sure you still can't do channel meetings in a private channel. So there are some limitations. So it's good for if you just want a conversation and have some separate files, but you can't do any of those other things. So that might change your decision on a private channel, or you might need to split out into a separate team, depending on what, what it is that you want to do. But in terms of files and folders, when you set up a private channel, it actually sets up not only another document library, which I think would be probably a better, a better way of doing it, but I'm not a technical person at Microsoft, so presumably they did it for some reason, it actually sets up a whole nother SharePoint site for you. So you get a whole nother SharePoint site and therefore another document library and therefore separate pages that you can put into your private channel if you wanted to. That is quite useful, but then also there is some nuance about you know how, how that shows up. So it works in, in terms of keeping it private, but then if you went through and tried to find that folder in the SharePoint site of the team, that's why you might not see it there because actually it's a completely separate SharePoint site. So obviously there's lots more nuance in Teams and SharePoint and architecture setup that we haven't got time to go through in this video today. If you wanna know more, or if you've got any questions, then pop them in the comments below. If you're an organization of 20 or more, this is one of the first things I help organizations with because that, if we get this right, it's the one thing that makes everything else downstream easier or irrelevant. And if you're interested in working together and need some consulting, then consider booking a call using the link in the description below. And if you are either in a bigger organization without any buying power, 
or a smaller organization than that, then consider supporting the channel. We've now moved all of our support straight into YouTube, so you can just click the join button underneath this video. We've got three tiers of support with the highest one being weekly live Q&A calls with me and access to members only videos. We've got a couple of cheaper tiers as well to get you priority access to questions on comments on YouTube and early access to any videos if you are interested in that. But the best free cheapest way you can help the channel is give the thumbs up if you like this one, click the subscribe button, share it with a friend and thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.